Mike is telling us about his film. It's called Dreamcatcher, and we heard a little clip of the trailer a moment ago. And it, it, it appears to me that it's following nine people, and they're kind of, is it like a, a journey, you're telling their story? It's their, their journey, journey of self-discovery, and yeah. it's, um, it's, it's really showing some things around what we know these days as being the law of attraction, which has been spoken about all over the world, but it's much deeper than that. It's, if we get into the reason why people are able to fast-track success these days, which is the same reason why everything's speeding up, Sally. It's the reason why we have iPhones and the internet, which we never had, you know, even 20, 30 years ago. So um, if we can get technology and everything to speed up, if we can have communications all over the world, then why can't we speed up what we want in life? There'll be lots of people pricking up their ears now thinking, how would this work for me? Before we go to that, explain to me a bit about the Slumdog Millionaire name. You know, Maya is a, a lady that, uh, she's about 62 or 63, she was born in Pakistan and when her parents took her over the border after the Second World War into India, they literally had nothing. The night that they came to India there was a big storm and, and she spent most of the night as a small child standing next to her mother in knee deep water and that's how they came into India. She's one of the wealthiest people in Mumbai now, she lives in an apartment probably worth 30 million quid, something like that. and uh, she. Had went through a heart operation, um, bypass surgery, about four years ago, and when she came out of that, she literally states in the movie that her heart literally opened, and she thought, I've done nothing with my life. My life is actually pointless. There is nothing I have done. So she decided that she would commit the rest of her life to um, helping un impoverished children. And four years later, now she's working with the Clinton Global Initiative, um, she's a personal friend of a lot of the people around Bill Clinton. She's met and spoke with him uh, a number of times and she's been able to attract uh, just the most massive amount of funding and people to help people in uh, India, Cambodia, South Africa and, and over a hundred villages now and, uh, and uh, what, however many families that is. What about the Maori man? Oh, nah, he's uh, one of my good friends now from, from New Zealand. And he has a full facial tattoo, which is a spiritual tattoo, um, which he really it took eight years in the planning and eight hours to, to put together. And uh, he had to go through a whole process to do this. But the trigger for him to do that is that he went to um, a speech one day by somebody who was talking about Maori leaders and how there were no Maori leaders anymore and all of them had become westernised and all of the good ones had turned their backs on their people. And he realised that he had this high-flying job, beautiful wife, nice car, and he too had turned his back on his people. So he decided that he would um, absolutely get into his Maori past and, and embrace that. And he's been in the UK here several times, speaking and lecturing at various universities. He's just been speaking and lecturing with Google in New York. So he's now all over the world um, teaching people to actually be proud of where they've come from. How interesting. More chat still to come. The, um when you started out making this film, Mike, what did you do? Did you just know nine people and decide to follow them and have them talk to you? How did it work? Um, I, I knew a few of them and the, the rest of the stories became evident. We shot the film in 15 different countries and it was a matter of just uh, me taking a film crew uh, to a lot of places that I, that I went and then stories just naturally developed. We have the story of Mr V from Cambodia and that naturally developed when I was in Cambodia. He was a guy who was at 10 years old, was living in a cave under the ground, um, you know, hiding from bombs that were going off overhead, carrying an AK-47 during the day, and now he is uh, running a travel company there, um, not making a lot of money, but giving 20% of the money that he does make to charities there to help children not have to go through and experience what he does. So following his story is a, is a pretty cool experience. You're yeah, being an achiever which is what it somehow seems to be about, or, um, sort of personal development, is not necessarily about making a lot of money, is it? Although a lot of people have. No, uh, wealth is what you're left with when you lose all your money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, people think wealth is all about money. That's the last thing that it's about. Wealth is about the connections you've made, the lessons that you've learned, the journey that you've been on, the memories that you have. When you die, you're not, you don't take your Ferrari with you but yeah. you do take your memories with you, so it's all about wealth in your memories. Yeah. And it, it, it is in a way, really, that the, the stuff that you do, is it about, you see, I often say, I'll finish a sentence in a minute, 
I know it's, it's all tumbling around in my head, you see, it just needs to, to be vocalised. I often say it's a shame that people don't realise what life is all about until something dreadful happens to them. Absolutely. And what you want to do is to be able to bring that moment to people without them having to go through the experience of something dreadful happening that's, that's pivotal. Yep. Most of us change our lives when critical moments happen and that was like Maya's story of, of going through the heart condition and coming out the other side realising she'd done nothing with her life even though she was extremely wealthy. But then we've got Sarah here today yeah, who's yeah. like um, just said off air that she really does believe that today's been pretty life changing so I'd love to know how what you've learned today. Exactly, I've always gone by the, the motto, it's like it's all about the journey and just experiencing loads of different things um, as I'm still young and just do as much as possible and being able to network with people like I've, people that I've met today it's just been it's been life changing and being on there which I didn't expect to do at all um, I've just enjoyed so much and it's it's like the, the jump wants to take me on to, to, um, to something new mm -hmm. and who knows what what can come out of it really but I've, I've definitely been inspired by it yeah because it would have been very easy just to remind you if you weren't with us in the first hour is that Sarah's here for is it just a day is it yeah just a day yeah and she was listening to Ted Robbins' program go out. Um, one of my panellists unfortunately couldn't make it, so I said, well, come and be on the panel. You had a moment there, didn't you? You could have said, no, I really don't think so. And I would have understood completely. Exactly, but I wanted to take the opportunity, because that's what life's about, taking the opportunity while it's there, because you'll regret it early and um, later if you don't take it. And I would have regretted it so much on the, on the way back home today if I hadn't done it. We'll all look at crossroads in our lives, don't we? Uh, various points and it's all it's like sliding doors isn't it mm, absolutely. You know, like the film and, and do you make this choice or do you make that choice I know that you, you travel around and you do a lot of talks to people um, you must have people come up to you Mike who are who are not necessarily think there's anything wrong with their lives but have kind of almost led, led a life along one route and there's nothing particularly exciting happening and maybe until they heard you speak they didn't really think there was anything wrong and then suddenly you've woken something up in them that makes them think, oh, uh. and presumably you can give them something to grasp hold of to help them move. Absolutely, and it's and I do get that all the time, mm. all over the world, and it and it's really about just reassuring them that this is just an opening, and it's not they've not now realised that their whole life that they've they've come to at this point has been worthless but it's been a journey of exploration to this point. So what's the exploration that they would like to do over the next month or over the next 12 months? And maybe that's as simple as if they say, oh, I've always wanted to travel. Well, where is somewhere you could go? Well, I've never been outside the UK. Well, okay, could you go to France, <laughs> you yeah. know, in, in the next 12 months? And, and how much is it to jump on the train and go to France? Or Belgium and go and have some nice Belgian chocolate and some Belgian beer or something like that. And it's about encouraging people to take small steps um, not necessarily giant leaps because uh, when people take small steps what happens is the small steps soon become giant leaps. I'm going to tell you in just a um, moment, Mike it's been a delight to have you on the panel, have you enjoyed your experience? Thank you Sally, it's been really really fantastic and I really want to thank you and the listeners for allowing me to share some of the story of dream catchers. You are touring uh, 22 cities in 50 days, where are we at the moment in all that? Uh, it's actually 26 cities and 43 events in just over 50 days and I'm about three quarters of the way through. I go to Toronto tomorrow. Wow, where have you been? Just quickly. Um, all throughout Australia, every city there, New Zealand, Bali, Jakarta, Singapore, KL, um, up to Shanghai and Tokyo and down into India and then into Johannesburg and, and Cape Town and into the UK. Wow, that's some journey, isn't it? That is some journey. It's a lot of fun. Do you ever wake up and think, where am I? No, I haven't yet. <laughs> I'm expecting that when I get home. <laughs> well, it's been very interesting talking to you and learning about your film Dreamcatchers. If you want any more information about Dreamcatchers, then get in touch with us here at BBC Radio Lancashire on the help desk and we'll tell you how you can get hold of the film. We hope maybe it's been a bit of an inspiration for you as well um, and you can start taking your own little steps. Um, to maybe making a difference.